Hey everyone and welcome to Kotlin Tips. Today, Elvis returns, or maybe he throws. That's right, we're gonna have another look at the Elvis operator in Kotlin. But before we dive into some actual code, I want to address a question that we've seen a couple of times in the comments, both on YouTube uh, and on Twitter. And that question is, why is the question mark colon operator called the Elvis operator? The answer to this question is actually quite a visual one. Uh, if you take the operator and you turn it on its side, then you can kind of look at it as if the colon was the two eyes from Elvis, uh, and then the question mark would be his signature hair wave that he has. Yeah, so that's where the name for the operator comes from. Interestingly enough, Kotlin is not the only language that has introduced the Elvis operator. Uh, you can also find similar concepts in languages like C Sharp, uh, PHP, uh, and C and C++. Okay. With that part out of the way, let's actually write some code. Let's say we have a function that just returns us a value from an API, but once again, because we are working with the Elvis operator, it returns a nullable value. In this case, I'm just gonna hard code it as null. Now, when we access the return value from a call to this function, uh, so let's have our result to just be get value from API, then we can see that at least if we have inlay hints enabled, um, that the return type of this get value from API call is string question mark, so it's nullable, right? What this means is that when we want to call a function, for example, on this value, we can't just call uppercase like this. Uh, we have to add the question mark to indicate uh, that we are kind of chaining optional operations here. And we will see that the uppercase result um, is also a string question mark. Now we can use the Elvis operator to essentially short circuit our code and get rid of the nullability kind of as early as possible. So one of the ways to approach this with the Elvis operator and kind of short circuit um, is to just use the Elvis operator together with the return keyword. At that point, we can remove this question mark down here. So now what you can essentially read this as is either uh, we get a value from the API and that value happens to be non-nullable, then we'll assign it to result, or otherwise we'll just return, we'll just finish our method execution which means the compiler is smart enough to figure out that down here, uh, result is already a string only, and it's not uh, a nullable string anymore. The magic that happens under the hood here is a so-called nothing type or a bottom type in Kotlin's type system. It's not that important that you understand exactly what this nothing type means. It's more important that you just remember that the compiler can reason about what happens uh, when each of these branches is executed. So if we look at the left side of the Elvis operator, the compiler can infer that this is just an actual string, whereas on the right side, it can infer that the code that follows afterwards will not be executed. And that means that all the code that follows uh, this statement can safely assume that the result value is an actual string and not a null. Return isn't the only uh, thing that you can use on the right side to kind of get this type of behavior. Of course, you can just apply a default value. Uh, this one is probably the classic that most of you have already seen. Uh, you can also throw an error, um, say no value from API. That also works. The magic why this also works is if we click into error, we can see that once again, this magical nothing type is appearing because well, if you are throwing an exception, uh, which is what the error function does, then we know that the code below will not be executed. And now that I've already brought up exceptions, we can of course uh, also just throw an exception directly here. For example, an illegal state exception because we're not expecting this to happen. And in this situation, the exact same behavior happens. So you can always use the Elvis operator to short circuit on null values, whether that's returning, throwing errors or exceptions. As long as the right hand side returns this magical nothing type, uh, your code will work just as you've seen here in this example. A special thank you also to everyone who pointed this out in the comments of the last episode where we were talking about how you can do more than one thing with the Elvis operator. If you haven't seen that episode yet, maybe go and check it out. That has been it for this quick tip. I'll see you in the next one.